Hey everybody, thank you for joining me for tonight's Midweek Moment. I always look forward to spending time with you and you know the routine. It's all about sharing what's happening here tonight. So if you'll hear the, hit the share button and uh, let's get other people plugged in. We're talking about prayer and uh, I think prayer is important to all of us. In fact, tonight I wanna to talk about the basics of prayer. As you know, we are in our 21 days of prayer here at New Life. So this is day number three of those 21 days. And I can't overemphasize the importance of prayer in our personal life. If you ask most people if they believe in prayer, they would say yes. Uh, if you ask them if they pray, they would say yes, I pray from time to time. But the truth of the matter is, many of us only pray in times of emergency. We only pray in times of crisis. It's when our world is falling apart and we can't fix what's wrong that we think, well, I guess it's bad enough I have to pray. Or let's call the church and have somebody pray. This is a serious matter. But I, I think prayer should be a part of our daily routine. And that's what I wanna talk about tonight, that prayer should be our first response and not our last resort. It should be something that we are engaging in on a regular basis, taking time to communicate, to talk to our Heavenly Father. So let's get into it tonight. First, let's talk about three unchanging facts about prayer. And hopefully these facts uh, will inspire you to pray. The first one is, is that God encourages us to pray. We read a verse last week, Philippians chapter four, verse number six. I'd like to read it again tonight. Paul said, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Pretty simple. God encourages us not to worry, not to try to fix everything by ourselves, but tell him about everything in our life, the things that concern us, and God will answer our prayer. So he encourages us to pray. Number two, prayer is a collaboration with God. I really like this point. If you look up the word collaboration, it means the action of working with someone to produce or create something. When we collaborate with another person, we're working together. We're working harmoniously to try to accomplish a particular task. That's what prayer is. It's a partnership with God. Think about it this way. We are on team God. God is for us. He's not against us. So we need to pray because it's a collaboration. And I think that's what John is talking about in 1 John chapter five. Let's read a couple of verses there, verse 14 and 15. John said, and we're confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. And since we know he hears us when we make our request, we also know that he will give us what we ask. Man, how good is that? It's a collaboration. If we will take time to ask, he will take time to answer. If we present our needs, he will meet those needs. Now, I just wanna point out one thing here. He says, if we ask for anything that pleases him. I think that's a conditional thing. I don't think we ask for ridiculous things, selfish things. I think asking for what pleases him means asking for uh, anything that is supported in scripture not contrary to scripture, not contrary to the character of Jesus Christ, when we ask according to his will. And the scripture oftentimes tells us what his will is for our life. So when we ask those things, we're collaborating with him. He's collaborating with us and he will meet those needs. Number three, prayer is a difference maker. <laughs> prayer is a difference maker. There are areas in our life where things need to be different. And we need to pray about those things. Here's what James said in James chapter five, verse 16, the earnest or sincere prayer of a righteous person has great power and it produces wonderful results. Prayer produces wonderful results. And you know why? Because we're asking, we're presenting, we're believing by faith and God is all powerful. He can do things that we can't do. He can open doors in life that we can't open. He can move mountains that we can't move. God can rearrange things in our life. 
the effectual or the sincere or the earnest prayer of somebody that has a right relationship with him, they were going to see results. Prayer is a difference maker. Now, I want to talk about some keys to building an effective life of prayer. I think prayer, as I said in the beginning, should be something we do on a regular basis, not just in an emergency situation. And I think for us to build a life of prayer, it's going to take a certain amount of personal discipline in our life. In fact, I'm convinced that nothing really happens in our life without personal discipline. I mean, if it's exercise, if it's diet, if it's spending time with your family, you've got to be disciplined enough to do those things, all right? So I'm going to give you a, a few thoughts tonight on how to build an effective life of prayer. And we're going to see this in the book of Daniel, Old Testament the book of Daniel, chapter 6, all right? So let's go there and read verse number 10. But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs room with its windows open toward Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, just as he had always done, giving thanks to his God. What do we learn here from Daniel's life? First of all, Daniel had a time to pray, a time to pray. Now, Daniel in the Old Testament was operating under Hebrew custom. Hebrew custom was sacrifices three times a day. So Daniel utilized that in his prayer life. It says that three times a day he would pray. Now that could be morning, noon, and night. I think it's important for us to set aside a time in our daily routine to spend with God and pray. Now, I'm not trying to be legalistic. I'm not saying you have to pray three times a day. That, that, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying you have to pray two times a day. I'm saying it would be good if you could pray one time a day. Schedule a time to pray, okay? Uh, well, pastor, that doesn't sound very spiritual. I just want to be led by the Spirit when I pray. Well, there's a time to be led by the Spirit and there's a time to have personal discipline in your life. Think about this. You set a time for dinner with your family. Uh, you set a time to meet with your doctor. You set a time for the cable TV guy to come out and fix your cable television. You set a time with your automobile mechanic to fix your car. Why don't you just block out some time in your day, whenever it is, whatever works for you, and spend a few moments in prayer. Some people like to pray in the morning. For others, that doesn't work. The mornings are too hectic. So pray sometime during the day. Pray at night. Pray before you go to bed. It, it doesn't matter when it is. Just take some time to pray. It'll make a difference in your life, and what you're doing is you're building an effective life of prayer. Number two, we see here that he had a place to pray. I'm, again, I'm not being legalistic. I'm not saying you can't pray anywhere. You can pray outside, inside, at church, outside of church. Uh, I like to walk and pray. Sometimes I take walks and pray. It doesn't matter where the place is. Just find a place that you can get alone. Daniel went upstairs. I think it's because he didn't want to be distracted. It, it was a place that he could get alone with God and he could unburden his heart and share with God. And I would encourage us to do the same thing. Find a place in your house. Sit outside in the garage. Sit outside in your car. You know, you can pray when you're driving your car. Just don't close your eyes and pray. Okay? Pray. Find a place. Find a time. I remember when we lived over on Lake Avenue, our kids were small. We were raising our children and three kids and neighbor kids. And sometimes the house would be crazy. It would be noisy. But Diane would always go into this walk-in closet that we had. And uh, it was big enough, she could go in, flip on the light, shut the door, she could get alone, and that was her prayer closet. And oftentimes I'd walk by the closet, and I could hear her in there praying. What was she doing? She was trying to find a time and find a place that she could be alone with the Lord and pray. Here's the third one, a plan to follow. We need a prayer plan. A lot of people get bored in prayer. A lot of people get discouraged with prayer because when they go in to pray, they don't have a plan. I think Jesus gave us a plan in Luke chapter 11 in the Lord's Prayer. Here's what he said. Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. 
Give us each day the food we need and forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation. Now, a lot of people recite this prayer. I'm not opposed to reciting the prayer, prayer. And I'm not opposed to reciting, memorizing and reciting this prayer. But I think it's much deeper than that. I believe that Jesus is giving us areas, topics in our life that we need to address in our prayer time. I think we start with worship and adoration. Uh, Father, uh, hallowed or holy is your name. We should always thank God and express gratitude and worship to him. And then he talks about uh, your will be done, your, your kingdom come. You know, the kingdom of God needs to be active here on this, on this earth. We need to pray for God's will in our family. We need to pray for, for God's will in our own life, God's will in our country. I guarantee you stuff that's happening here in this country is not happening in heaven. Lord, may your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. We need to, to pray about our, our daily needs. He talks about providing the food that we need. God wants to hear. Remember Paul said, pray about everything. Let him know about our basic needs, food and finances and family issues and problems at work. Address those things in your prayer. And then forgive us because we all sin, we all make mistakes, we all do things we shouldn't do. We need to ask God to forgive us. But it's not just God forgive me and give me grace, but we have to be willing to forgive people that offend us. So Lord, help me forgive those that offend me throughout my day. And then help us not to be tempted because we're all tempted. We need to make wise decisions. So Jesus is really giving us a, a, a plan in which we can pray. And we just take uh, this plan, this outline, if you will, and we incorporate the personal needs and challenges of our own life. Here's the bottom line. You aim at nothing, you hit absolutely nothing. So you need to go into to prayer with, a, with a, a place and a time and a plan to follow. Any successful business has a business plan. Uh, here we are in the football season, we're in the middle of the playoffs, and I guarantee you every team has a game plan. The things they want to address in the game, the things that are important, the plays they want to run. Make prayer a plan. Decide what it is. Write stuff out and take that into your time of prayer. And when we do that, we're going to see God answer prayer. Uh, we're going to see prayer become a part of our life, and we're going to look forward to the times we spend in prayer. Now again, we're in our 21 days of prayer. We have these prayer cards available, so if you're at church on Sunday, make sure you take one and fill it out. Write down the needs that you're praying about, things that, that we can pray over in your life or things that we can pray over uh, regarding someone that you know, a family member, a friend. You can stop by during the week. You can pick one of these up and fill it up. We have receptacles, and you can drop it in there. Now, here's something really cool. Next Wednesday night is going to be different. Our Wednesday night moment next Wednesday will be a live worship service in our sanctuary. So I want to encourage you to attend next Wednesday night, or if you can't attend, you can watch it online. That will be next Wednesday night, the 20th. Make sure that you're here for our worship night. I hope you have a fantastic week, and I'll see you next time.